First of all, man, I want to say it's an, it's an honor oh, man. to sit here with, with somebody like yourself, man. Like, you know, you're somebody that, that I respect. I'm not saying that I don't respect a lot of people in the game, <laughs> but then, you know, you have those individuals that um, when you listen to their music, they have the ability to make you want to elevate your game. And, and you're, you're someone that I consider game elevation worthy you know when i listen wow. to your music like I'm, I'm i'm inspired by it you know what i'm saying so it's like that's insane, to, to, to sit here with you and, and partake in this this retreat here the second year of the playlist retreat man it, it, it's, it's we, i feel like a kid in a candy store no, you know? i'm 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 still pinching myself because i can't believe i get to you know like to be around just you know like legends you know what i mean like like we were just talking like you like you you've built careers and with your music and your songs have been are are, are timeless you know what i mean yeah. and that and like to me that's an inspiration for me like i i want to be a producer or or a person that makes timeless music and to be around such giants and and cats that have literally been through a renaissance and created a new new styles of music you know what i'm saying and the and for from where my 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 little girl could listen to it, you know what I mean? Like twenty years from now, that's like amazing. That's that's what I want to be able to do. So man, I, it's honored. an honor to be here. I'm honored that that you to feel that you. way, man. You know what? <laughs> and, and like I have to got to give a lot of props and respect to Jeff because we we, yeah, we have a nickname for him. <laughs> I don't think he knows we have a nickname for him around the camp. He, he is Professor. Jeff Xavier X. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it's like this is, you know, Xavier School's uh, School for the Gifted. And when you walk around, I'm going to call, I'm going to say the campus just for all intents and purposes. When yeah. you walk around <laughs> the campus, you you start seeing, you know, people like you said, iconic people, you know, that, that were figureheads in their respective fields. You know, you have a, a, an assortment of producers, DJs. Yeah. You know, sound engineers, musicians, and and it's funny because like, I, it's a certain energy that I feel watching the older demographic, the older guys looking at the younger guys who they're fans <laughs> of. Like, yo, man, like you know what I mean? Yeah, I saw yeah. it last year. I see it this year, and I think a lot of it has to do with um, Jeff doesn't get enough credit for this. Yeah. And you know, to, we heard yesterday Ron Fest was saying something that's like the ultimate quotable. Bar, he says, um, my gift is not rapping. You know, <laughs> my, my gift is to provide perspective. Rapping right. is how I do it. So, right, right, right. As great as Jeff is as a DJ, right, and and and, and as wonderful as his talent behind those ones and twos are, yeah, yeah. he has a more magnificent. Uh, his his gift is being able to put the right people in the room. Yeah. You know, and, and it's just like being able to, he just knows who to put together. He knows how compatible they are and how progressive they're going to be in creating something something magical. You know, yeah. and I think this retreat, to me, it typifies that. It's, I mean, for me, it's, it kind of came out of nowhere because I didn't know anything about it. You know what I mean? So, um, you know, when, when you get an email that Jazz, Jazzy Jeff, you know, from Jazzy Jeff, who is one of the architects for me, you know what I'm saying? In, in terms of becoming a DJ, you know, I still watch him in awe. So I'm, I'm, I'm in awe at all times. Even him walking around here, I don't even know what to do around him. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's weird because I've studied him for however 20 plus years and, and, you know, just to be here for him t to be around like all this talent, you know, all the stuff that he's done and to be a visionary, and to even do something like this is visionary, you know what I mean? To, to understand that, you know, you bring all these people together from across across the world, different genres, different skill sets to, you know, to, to basically, uh, um, you know, try, try to get people to collaborate and, and, and to try to advance the culture of music and art. It's just amazing that he has that kind of vision to do it. You know what I mean? And, and old and new, you know, the new youngest, these young kids to... You know what I mean? The OGs, you know what I mean? And 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 it's like, you know, it's it's dope to just see everybody interacting and and having the same passion. That's the thing. It's like everybody here is passionate about what they do and the music that they make. And you know the crazy thing is this this whole it's, it's this this I this playlist retreat 
it's an ongoing conversation. You know, mm -hmm. this is conversations that that have been had for the better part of the last 15, 20 years. You know, <laughs> talking about, you know, the music industry has a certain way of igniting your igniting your passions mm -hmm. and, and, and you know putting out the embers. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. So it's like it, it, there's a there's like a, a a roller coaster ride of you know, being so conviction where you come in the game and then you feel like, man, what am I doing? You know, am I doing this for a check? You know, so, right, right. you know, and, and, and things happen and sometimes you have to find that motivation again. And I think in the conversations we've had, a group of us with him, it's almost like, wouldn't it be wonderful to just just create, you know, without any, any notion <laughs> of, hey, I got to get this placement or I got, I got this deadline, you know right. what I mean? And, right. and it's... This is to me, it exemplifies what what that goal is. So when you say like you watch all these people creating, it, it's like it's, it's no pressure. No, it's you not. Know? You could just have fun. You can make something that's ill. You know what I mean? That's really what for me. Like, and I'm sure all of us, we got into it because we. I, I wanted to like listen to my music in the car. You know, I wanted to, like if I listen to a Jay Dilla beat CD, I wanted to have that same feeling about what I do, you know yeah. what I mean? And and it's like I feel like everybody here is like that. You know, we 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 know who the groundbreaking um artists are or the producers or the musicians, you know, that are doing their thing. So it's like to just just to be here, man, just to be here at this retreat and and to and to to see everybody's process is just like it's a dream come true because I literally for me I, I was literally like in a, a creative block. Like right now, like I'm, I was talking to my wife, like I can't wait to get back home. I can't wait to get back home. You, 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 were, you were in a creative funk? What I go through mean? creative funks all the time. Like I have, I have more creative funks than, I feel like probably than anybody. You know what I mean? Because I'm either in my head, I'm not, you know what I mean? I, I lose my intention of what I'm doing. You know what I mean? Because like you said, when you're in the industry, you know, you, you, you don't know. Sometimes you get in a room with people and you're like, we don't even, it doesn't even make sense. But, you know, like you said, sometimes you're just trying to get a check. You're trying to do whatever. And you lose perspective on who you are as a creator, you know, as a creative person. And I feel like I've run into that a lot. And it kind of makes you question, like, you kind of forget who you are. But when you come here, <laughs> you know what I'm saying, and you talk to people, that have accomplished these amazing things and they come up and talk to you like, yo, I love this beat that you did or I love this this record or whatever. You're like, you like that? Like you like that, like you're, you know what I mean? Or if we talk and you're saying that to me, I'm like, that's insane to me. <laughs> you, know yo, you know what's crazy about this is we look at it, some people that from the outside looking in might, might look at this gathering of, of people and they would say something like, wow, look what Jeff did. You know, and, and 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 it's funny because they'll look at it as like all these people came out and hang out and work with Jeff. And it looks from the from the outside looking in, it looks like it's a thing for Jeff. Right, but, but, right. but they don't realize this is like almost it's like for us. <laughs> you know, right. like you're here and this is like I'm not even gonna lie to, lie, lie to you at all. Like the last three, four days that I've been here, mm -hmm. it's almost like I've been oblivious to everything that's going on. You know, outside of <laughs> outside of here, I hear Trump was talking about shooting, getting Hillary assassinated. I, didn't hear about it, right. I, I find that at four thirty a.m. when I go home and I turn on CNN, and I'm like, right. wow, this is going on. <laughs> right, and, right. And right. We're out here, you know, just chilling, hanging out, and right. making great, you know, great records. So I, I totally get what you're saying. I'm plugging. It's a great way of recharging yeah. and, and getting back, giving you that conviction to make make music. Yes. Yeah, I, man. Just being like, like, you just see it, man. You see it. You're around it. You're around great music. You know, you're around these DJs. That's where I started. And it's just it's just great to to feel like a kid again, to feel like you're starting over because everybody here is ill. So you're like, you know what I mean? So you're like, I got to be, you know what I mean? I got to yeah. continue whatever I... You know, I've done. I have to. I have to be even iller than I, than what I've done. Before. You say DJ, right? Because it's funny. Like, I know your name is DJ Khalil, <laughs> but I I know I've I, you to me are such a prolific producer that 
sometimes I don't really associate the fact that you got into the game as a DJ, right? <laughs> you know, I, I used to rap. I got into the game as a rapper. My love for music came through loving hip hop and being a rapper. Right. And I had no idea I was going to end up producing and making the records in an entirely different genre than the right. one I was passionate about. <laughs> so I just want to ask you this because it, it, it's, it's funny. I've, I, I've somehow managed to bring like my love for hip hop into you know what I've done in, in, in R and B music. So as a DJ, how do you, do you think that has helped you navigate you know the, the industry and, and be the producer that you are and make the records that you've made? I mean, being a DJ, I mean, you're you're a tastemaker. You know what I mean? You become a tastemaker because you you're picking the records. You know, when you're doing parties, you know, you have to play to what what people like, and you and you know. You know, once you study music and you listen to all these records, I always tell people it's, you're building a library in your head. You're building a library of melody, everything. And I feel like it gets internalized. And so when you're playing out to a crowd, it's just a part of you. You know what I mean? And it really is. And you become a tastemaker. And I feel like it when you're in the in the studio with somebody and you're or you're working with a musician, you're like, nah, that's not gonna work. Cause I know on a record, if that's that I'm spinning, that's not gonna work. It's not gonna sound good. You know what I mean? That drum is not going to work. If I, that's why I work on drums so much, because I could listen to Dilla, I could listen to Dr. Dre. You know what I mean? I could listen to all these amazing producers and know that these drums aren't going to work. They're not going to cut it. If I want to make a classic record, I have to be just as good as them or better. You know what I mean? So you become a tastemaker and you you log all this information over over time, and 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 really it just becomes who you are. And, and that's why so many DJs become producers because you have all this knowledge that a lot of, of the, the, you know, a, a musician may not have that. You know what I mean? They don't know exactly what's, ta what's tasteful and what's not. But you do because you listen to so many records. You can go back and listen to old stuff, new stuff, whatever, and apply it to any, any production that you're making. So it's kind of an advantage. In my opinion. It's like having like, like a reference story. You ever go to a law firm? <laughs> and, and, and I, I, I still don't think these lawyers read all those books. Right. <laughs> you, ever go to, you ever been to a conference room and they have the entire, uh, all the tomes of whatever the California law is or whatever <laughs> right, in the background. Right. But it serves a purpose. You know, I think there's a lot, there's a lot of cases in there that have been have some type of precedent. Like, hey, you're stuck in some case and you need you something need to reference, to reference something, something. You go pull one of those volumes and right. there's something in there. Right. So essentially, I agree because I think... One of my biggest assets, and I'm currently moving right now, right? Mm -hmm. And one of my biggest headaches in this move has to be relocating records, relocating <laughs> vinyl. Right. So as a DJ, and and and, and I know the, you're a record collector, uh, um, and someone that's uh, found quite fond of sample music, like having that that resource, even if I don't sample a record, but just knowing that I can reference a block of three, four years of CTI produced records, <laughs> you know, with Bob James may have, may have been the arranger or, mm -hmm. or reference something from black jazz, right. whether there's a duck car and infant, infant eyes or something like that, or reference a mainstream record label, uh, Hal Galper or something like that, right? Right. Um, I always feel like even if I'm not sampling, I think sonically it's, it's always been a, an educational tool. Right. So I think what you're saying, I, I, there's similar parallels there too. Like when you're saying, look, I, I, my 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 resources and the records that I, I play for people, and I see how they react. Right. And my I, I, my my love for records is similar in knowing that I, I know what made me move when I heard that record. Right. <laughs> you know what I mean? I yeah. know how that bass line. Right. Was the tone it had, or right. How those chords resolve. So I'm work, when I'm working with musicians, I find myself like using that as a as a reference source. So how did you how did you get to a point like especially because you have such a um, just the songs being able to make great songs. You know what I mean. Like where did that that you know what I mean that knowledge come from in your production? Like you know what I mean because. You know what, man? It's it's been it was instilled at a touch of jazz that you know you got to respect the song. So. Hmm. I used to, you know, when and I used to rap. So of course, you're, you're song driven, you're lyric driven. And it's all about saying mm -hmm. a dope metaphor, a dope line. But as far as developing the story, 
you, you know, <clears throat> touch, touch of Jazz was kind of like a, a songwriting factory, <laughs> you know, and, and it, was, it was very competitive. You had a lot of people and it would probably be, hey, we have a, we have a placement opportunity. Right. <laughs> and everybody goes into their rooms and 16, I first, when I first came through with 16 people That's and it crazy. eventually got pared down to the six that, you know, made those records that you were referencing earlier and, and Andre Harris and Vidal Davis, Keith Felser, Darren Henson and Carvin right. Higgins and myself. And, you know, learning how to respect, you know, great songsmanship, you learn by making horrible records. <laughs> right. you, know, you make horrible songs and, and things that don't fit. And, and as right. you grow, you kind of, you know, working with other people, working with great talented songwriters that will come through there. You know, so, you know Eric Roberson was a, a very talented. We worked wow. with him on a lot of records. Jill Scott was uh, really dope. You know, when you help, when you That's develop so your sound with people, um, I remember uh, Kenny Green from Intro came through at one time. Wow. And, you know, before he passed away, got rest his soul. Wow. And it was always like, you know, people floating through the, you know, Kipper Jones, who had rent for Brandy at the time. Yeah. So early on, I was being thrown in with a lot of, you know, people who had won Grammys and, and had iconic records in R&B. And here I am, a hip hop guy. Yeah, all I know is just, hey, it's a dope beat and it's a loop, it's hot, I can spit to it. And it's like, nah, you know, it doesn't resolve or it doesn't have enough dynamics. And, wow. you know, you don't, you don't, you might not be cognizant or aware of those things at, at such a young age, but the more you work with people and the more you develop that, you develop the sense of, you know what, the star of the show may not be my, my production. It probably is, <laughs> what is the song about, you know, right. and how this song is going to make somebody feel. Right. So we've adopt, adopted a policy of kind of like, I, I wanted, I want the song to be strong enough that no one asks, you who made this? You who wrote this? Who did this track? <laughs> because if you ask who did that track, there's something about that track that stands out too much More to where people won't say, wow, this, I, I can relate to this. I want people to say they, right. they relate to this or how that song makes them feel right. and then start talking about the different things, the different elements in the song. Because I think, you know, that's something Quincy Jones always, always had as his mantra is, you know, nothing's more important than the song. Right. And, and we are all going to humble ourselves and do our due diligence to make sure that the song, the song is, is served. You know? Right. Right. That's and, crazy. And, 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 you know, sometimes I feel like, I'm still learning, which I am, you know, right. every year, every day you do something and you're like, wow, right. I wish I, I had learned that. Right. <laughs> <Yeah>. Exactly. <laughs> now that, I mean, it's a learning process there, you know, like what I've learned is like, there is no destination. There's no destination. It's literally, we are here to learn and, and it's the process. That's the best part of it. You know what I mean? So it's going through the process of creating those records, making those bad records, Making the great records, you know what I mean? You got to go through those to get to the good ones, you know what I mean? So It's a journey. It's a journey. Yeah. It's a journey. There is no destination. Like, I've finally, it's finally started clicking in for me last couple years, like, you know, because you just start either doubting yourself or doing whatever or doubting your process, but it's like, you just got to keep going and it's the process and you got to keep learning. And like, I'm, like, what you've already done is what I'm trying to understand is like making a great song, you know? you know, working with writers that, you know, can write a great song, being able to identify that, you know what I mean? And like, so I look at your, at the camp at Touch of Jazz is like a Motown. Like that's like the modern Motown, literally. Like, you know what I mean? You just named like literally uh, like Gamble and, you know what I mean? It's like, it's like all that stuff, uh, Dozier Holland, you know what I mean? It's like, it's the same thing. It's crazy to me I, 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 that it's like a modern I, Motown. You know, you know? I, I don't ever want to feel like, I agree with that because I just I have so much respect for those camps. Of course, and, and, I, and I always feel like, you know, I don't ever I don't ever have a hard time sometimes accepting that because I feel like I'm being arrogant because I know what those guys did. Right, when, I, right. when I look at the the level of of uh, of music any one of those labels created right. in a short time span you know right. i'm like wow i only wish i could do a fraction of that <laughs> you know but i appreciate you saying that you know because it's like you know i i don't i see the i see where the music business is now and yeah. 
you know, I think art is a lot savvier now when it comes to, you know, business and branding and things of that nature. Right. And one of the things that's that's pretty tough to watch, and as I, I've gotten older, and I'm far from a curmudgeon, you know what I'm saying? Like, I, 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 I'm very relatable. Uh, I like to build with the younger generation. Right. I'm very open, you know what I mean? Yeah. I'm very inviting Absolutely. when it comes to, like, sharing knowledge, because Jeff Jeff has shared a lot of knowledge right. with us, and is still sharing knowledge. So, but it, it bothers me when I hear stuff like, I was listening to the, was, when I was driving in yesterday, I was listening to the radio, and there's an artist, very popular right now. <laughs> and, you know, he's a singer slash rapper <laughs> from north of the border, and he's not Drake, though. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> but he was on the radio, and he says something along the lines of, oh, yeah, I did that in 15 minutes. And the a, and a radio host was celebrating, like, wow. Right. And they were amazed at, Oh, you know, 15 minutes. How do you know that in 15 minutes you're going to have a hot record? Like, well, right. sometimes it takes me longer. You know, like the other, he referenced another one of his hit records. Right. It took me 45 minutes, but you know, sometimes you just got to work a little longer to get it. <laughs> and I'm sitting there like 15 and 45 minutes. Man, 45 minutes, sometimes I, I go through 45 minutes trying to figure out what direction I want to hit. <laughs> right, right. You know, let alone right. work. I mean, I right. could work on a record for 15 minutes, right? And it'll sound like it's a 15 minute record, exactly, yeah. based on you know the quality that I try to put in in, in whatever I, I approach, right? So how do you feel about that? Because I think you know you are someone that your music sounds meticulous, like you know there's it's very <laughs> nuanced, like yeah. you hear things that the untrained ear is gonna may not pick it up, but it adds to the entire. Um, scope of what the song is supposed to do but us producers us us trained you know <laughs> individuals we got to learn um ability we will hear things and be like dang he did this shit right there what the fuck he did <laughs> you know what i mean so yeah. you know how do, how do you feel about where it's going where it's like you you i saw you we were this rhythm roulette thing we're doing here yeah. i saw you on the couch <laughs> yeah like diligently working on on on, 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 on well you too on, so how do you feel where now we've gotten to a point where it's so e it's so disposable and people consume it so fast yeah. that it's almost like, do you feel like, hey, I'll just take the shortcut and just make a 15 minute production or? I just can't. I can't, I, I mean, I can't because I'm too passionate about it. I know what I grew up on. Mm -hmm. My, you know, my, my, my dad and my mom, like they played the greats, you know, period. And that's really, I know good music when I hear it and you know, I really would be disrespecting my, my my parents, you know, the the legacy of their of what they you know what they taught me. It's just I I, I just can't do it. I mean, I, I I'd rather spend a whole day working on drums. Like when I work with Aloe on one song, I did the drums six times over and over again. You know what I mean? We we work. You know, we will work on a record for six months. You know what I'm saying? And try to get it right. And like. And, I, and it paid off. It ended up being like you. You had one of the most played records <laughs> in, in uh, of two twenty of twenty fifteen, right? <laughs> yeah, twenty fourteen. Yeah, like you know NBA playoffs. Yeah, <laughs> every segue to every sporting events. I mean, and, and to me, like, how does that feel, man? It's crazy. I mean, it's crazy because I've known Allo for a long time, mm. and I knew I know how talented he is, and. To see where he was at at the time when we worked on the record, but it was, you know, we we went through a lot just to get it, you know, just to get it right, just to get the get the song right, man. Like we we it went through so many different changes, you know, all that kind of stuff. But you know, it was really it was literally like, and it was my first time doing anything like that. Like they, you know, I worked on this project and I've never done anything like that because everything up to that point was hip hop, you know what I mean? So. I'm over there, like literally driving the studio, telling my manager, I can't do this. I can't do this. And he's like, you got to do it, you know? And I just, and, and uh, I worked really hard. I mean, I worked really hard just to try to make a great song, you know what I mean? And that, that taught me, like, you know, it's about the song. And Alan wrote a, an amazing song. And I just had to provide the, the, back, the right backdrop for it, you know? You so, know what? Your approach is, is such that the artists talk about it. <laughs> you know, a, 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 a bad reputation is a long way in the music industry. A great reputation goes further. You know, like wow. uh, you know, people come back. 
And one of the artists, the artists we we we're working with currently. Oh yeah, let us see, <laughs> let us see, let yep. us see, singing your praises, coming over to the studio. We just did a song together. Crazy. And she was like, man, she's loving what you guys are doing. Wow. And it's like, you know, sometimes you underestimate how that approach can be infectious right. on one end, but it also can really inspire people. You right. know, because you know, I was talking to her and just how we're talking about. The music industry has this thing where it makes you feel like, man, I'm gonna just chill for a while. Right. Yeah, whatever. Right. You know, we had our conversations and you guys work and she hit me up mad inspired, like, yo, I'm in a gray zone. Wow. You that's know, crazy. so it, it, that to me is, is a testament to, you know, your, your work ethic and how you work and how detailed you are in making sure, like, you cover, you know, <laughs> All the bases, yeah. I mean, it's because it's not about us, you know what I mean? It's about the artists, you know what I mean? Like like I said, like, you know, you've been a part, your songs are going to be performed forever, you know what I mean? Like, literally, like you said, at weddings, people get married to your songs. Like, you know, I've got to a point where I understand what that means, how important that is, because I grew up on that, you know, I grew up on Luther Vandross, I grew up on... You know what I mean? Motown. I grew up on Marvin Gaye, you know, and I understand the context of it. So, you know, it's it's, it's bigger than us. We want to make music where they can perform it for the rest of their lives. That That's that's what I tell every artist that I work with is like, will, will you be able to record, uh, you know, not record, but perform this forever? You know, will, will this be the last song you do in your show? Well, you know what I mean? Like, I'll, I'm approach like, I, you know, and I know that's what you do is like, we need to approach it that way to where it's like, you have to perform this forever. This is for like forever. Could you do that with a tag on the top of your record? <laughs> <laughs> no, you will never hear a tag. <laughs> That's funny. Cause I mean, it, it's like, I work with some songwriters and artists and they're like, Hey, I'm, you know, they're about to put the record out. Hey, you know, they, they, they calling you about all the deliverables, you know, Hey, right. we need the files. We're going to send the short form, you know, the producer's deck. By the way, is, is do you have a tag that you usually put on your record? <laughs> oh I ain't got no damn tag. Do like, I look do you like? know who you're talking to? <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's funny because, you know, we laugh and, and make fun, but I, I feel blessed that we came in an era where that wasn't something that was uh, the rule rather than the exception. Right. And now it feels like if you're a young producer coming up in the game, it's almost like Brand, 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 brand. Oh, make a good, great record. Hey, I fell into a great record. Right. Back to brand, 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 brand. And I think we become great marketers, uh, great uh, brand builders, and right. you know, and, and you learn all the all the all the hot uh, all the hot terms like exponential growth. <laughs> and, <laughs> it's a symbiotic, you know, <laughs> partnership and all of that. And you heard you have all these. You know, like like the Sam Hinkie of 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 songwriting. You know, all the <laughs> analytics and and, and right. advanced stats. But it's like it's 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 crazy that I feel like sometimes that's robbing you. As, as, I'm not gonna knock anybody for that, but I feel like when you p put so much emphasis on the brand aspect to your music, it's like how do you grow as a, as a, right. creatively? You know? Yeah. Because everything now becomes more of a of a um, I'm doing it for the potential effects my my well placed branding might have on this on this opportunity. Right. I mean, I I don't know, man. It's just for me, like Dr. Dre is my mentor. Like I've known Dr. Dre since I was 14. He doesn't have his music stands on his own. You know when you hear a Dr. Dre production, you just know it. And he you know, he's the blueprint, you know what I mean? When it, especially when it comes to hip hop, but he's one of the big, greatest producers of all time mm -hmm. on top of that as well. And he's been able to, he doesn't need a tag, doesn't need a, I mean, he's a rapper too, mm -hmm. so that helped, but, and he's an artist, but his sound, you can't mistake it. And I feel like all the producers, especially here, you know what I mean? And, and, and we're talking about like, I, I've, you know, when I heard your production, when I heard Music Soul Child, it's like, I know, like I, I was like, I wish I could do that. You know what I mean? Like when I heard it the first time, like I want to make, I wish I could make a song like that, like where it had the swing, I hear the Dilla, I hear all that stuff and I hear the drums are crazy. 
I have the 12 inch. I was working for Polygram when that came out. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Like literally mixing it. I'm a DJ, so I'm like, I can't stop playing this record. How did they make it sound like that? You know what I mean? So when you have a sound that's, you don't need the tag. I mean, I understand what these new producers are doing, but mm -hmm. you know, when I think of the producers that I love, they don't really they have, have the tag. tag. But is it a byproduct of the era? Of, of the times I think, we're in? I mean, it has to be because, you know, because you know, it's about, sometimes it's, it's, you know, some of these kids are, it's about being famous. You know what I mean? A lot of kids are into being famous more so than, I'm not saying they're not passionate about the music, mm -hmm. but they're just as passionate about being famous. With me, I'm, that's just, I'm not, I don't come from that school. That's just not what, you know what I mean? I think I know what that, that stems from too is, you know, most people know, you, you know, your dad was an NBA great, you know, mm -hmm. and some, some don't know that, you know, and I think a lot of times, when you know, and you play sports, you know, yeah. Or, or, or you, you were serving them at Morehouse. <laughs> Is that true? For one year, yeah. <laughs> he was a point guard, year. right? Yeah, yeah, point guard. So, yeah. like playing sports, you kind of understand the ideology of like the the defined roles in a team. Yeah, for right. Sure. So you know, like if you are the grandstand and then you're supposed to be bringing the ball up court, right. up court, right, and then setting everybody up, but they're like, "Hey, come, Khalil, taking." Five straight three right, pointers, right, right. right? Like, yeah, get out. Like, right. Come, exactly. sit, sit over here next to me. So that that concept is lost a lot too. So it's like it almost puts the onus on them, like, yo, I'm I'm the manager, I'm the I'm the producer, I'm the songwriter. Right. I'm the the legal guy. It's like, you know, everybody's micromanaging in their career so Everything, much right. that I think the 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 lack of a a, a a defined team and defined roles kind of derails what they can be because a lot of them are pretty pretty dope yeah i hear a lot of dope shit out here yeah. and i'm like yo like dude is dope yo I, I'm, yeah. I'm checking for this person right but sometimes the focus is not there because i think everything is so instantaneous we know social media you yeah. know has played a great role and has played a, a horrible role at times because yeah. it's a it's a um attention span enhancer yeah right? oh, yeah it, it, it kills your attention span and people get so caught up with instant gratification and you get instant feedback. Yeah. In some cases that's great, in yeah. some cases that's it's horrible. Bad. Yeah. And, and you know and the advanced stats don't really tell like that one view, you don't know what they were doing behind their screen right. when they was watching that. So right. and it, it creates this whole sense of a false sense of security right. for people to depend on that and I think that's great because I I love what branding and what social media and all that stuff does for careers but you can't skip that one part that that's gonna make everything else possible. You right. can't do the social media stuff first and the branding without anything without the, to brand. Exactly. You know? It's a body of work. It's about a, a Dr. Drake can sell headphones because of his body of work. Jay Z can have title because of a body, body of work. work. People buy into your art and what you've done and what you've done over a span. You're a legend. Then you can sell a product. You know what Will I mean? Will Kanye be able to sell Yeezys without? Exactly. Without Ye Jesus walks. <laughs> exactly. That's what I'm saying. It's like people want to skip that step because they see that okay, I can make a lot of money, but you don't understand the the sweat, blood, sweat, and tears. You know what I mean? It, like you have to go through to even sell a product or to even have that kind of recognition. You know, and like social media, I'm not great with social media at all. I'll be honest. I've just I'm that's just not who I am. I'm a very behind the scene. You know, and I'm and and. You know, it just doesn't work for me because I can easily be distracted. I know the kind of personality mm -hmm. that I have. I definitely will be on there like, oh, who like this? Who, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? So I kind of, I'd rather just go in the studio and bury myself in work. And then, you know, I'll do take a picture with people and do all that kind of stuff. But I'd rather the work, you know what I mean? That adds to your allure, man. Because like the, the, the stuff I hear that comes back from people that know you, you know, they it, it's almost like, you know, like they saw they they went to Everest and, and got with a Sherpa up there. You know what I'm saying? It's like it's like they, yeah, it's like a myth, but not, not in a bad way though. It's almost like wow, like you you went to his studio. Yo, is it true that he uses? You know, and, and it's like you know the fact that you're not putting it out there. You know, like hey, look at me, everybody. I'm this is what I'm using. Hey, look at me. I'm working with this person. Like it, it it's great to show people what you know what you're doing as an artist and give them a peek into your world. Yeah. So long as it enhances the overall product, you right, know, because sure. it adds to the experience. But I think because you are how you are, 
people, you know, have a curiosity of sorts that that makes you more, that much more exclusive, and that and that and makes them feel like it's a treat when they get in with you. You know, so that's, <laughs> that's, that's that's great. You know, that's crazy. I mean, you know. I don't know, man. I, I mean, it's just, you know, that's just the way, like like you said, the basketball analogy is the best thing because it's just like, it's not about grandstanding. It's just my dad, always, my, he always instilled in me, like, it's about the work. You know, you put in the work and, you know, you will, re like, me being here is, is like, the be biggest reward I've, I can receive, like, for uh -huh. me. It's one of the biggest rewards because I, I get to sit here and talk with you. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And And we can talk shop and... We could talk about stuff and I can exchange numbers and you know what I mean? I'm meeting James Poyser. I mean, like people that I've read the credits on, I'm like, I can't, you know what I mean? And they're here, they're physically here. So it's like, this is like the biggest reward for me for the whatever work I've done, you know what I mean? At this point. And, 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 and take pride in knowing that these same guys that you're referring to in that manner look at you like, wow. You know, and, and I think that's the good part about, you know, the retreat, you know, yeah. it's kind of feel like everybody's a fan of each other. Yeah, exactly. You know, and I think anybody that's a sensible person with respect to how they view music, we're fans first. Yeah. You know, I, I, I still listen to, to songs as a fan. Right. You know, at one point I used to listen to an album like, yeah, let me pick out the next single. Like, what the hell am I doing? I'm not an A&R. I'm right, not getting right. a check. You right. know, it helps to, you know, to keep your ear in tune with what's going on, but I think I have to listen as a fan, you yeah, know? I have yeah. to I have to consume the music the same way I was consuming it when I first got into the game and said, right. yeah, this is what I want to do. So when you encounter people here, you're you're going to find that you have a lot of people here that are fans of the music, yeah. fans of the art form and the craft and all of these things that right. brought us here together. So. That's why you get the vibe of like, oh man, you dope. Oh man, you know it ain't. Yeah. There's no yeah. filter. There's, there's no. There's no. nothing that it's gonna make people say, I got all my jewelry on. I, I can stun on you. Right. You know? Right. Right. <laughs> nah, man. So it's like it's, it's so relaxed. You know. It's, and that's you know that's Jazzy Jeff, man. Like he, that's how he's he's approachable. You know, what I mean, he's always been approachable. Mm. I've, I've I walked up to him at a I forgot what show it was. It was it was in L. A. And I just walked up to him and I was just like, man, look, I'm a huge fan. I'm just a big fan. He was so nice, so gracious. You know what I mean? And all my heroes are just, they're just gracious. You know what I mean? So to be here and to talk to talk to everybody one-on-one -on -one and to get that kind of um, humility, you know what I mean? Even they've done these amazing th groundbreaking things. It's like, it just makes me love everybody even more. You know?